today's video, we're going to talk about 90 plus exhaust manifolds. These are an upgrade if you have an earlier turbo car. The earlier turbo cars have a much boxier looking manifold. They'll have the bolts for the turbo are, are 10 millimeter and they'll go all the way through. It won't have this lip. It'll be set up for a T3. Um, those manifolds just don't flow as well. Um, these 90 plus are a great upgrade, uh, but if you want to run a T3 style turbo, um, you'll need to machine this lip off of the manifold and you'll have to bore the studs to from eight millimeter to 10 millimeter. The other thing you'd have to change is this opening here is much bigger on a T3. Here's a T3 flange. Um, you can see the difference, the bigger stud holes and the difference in the port. This video, we're not going to focus on that. That's just straight machine work. Um, it's an option that we um, do here at the shop. Uh, I'll have a link um, in the description uh, for that service. But um, yeah, it's something you can do. You can send your manifold in and we'll convert it to T3. The other thing that happens with these, um, pretty much all of them uh, get these cracks. Um, this one isn't too bad, but um, it has a crack. Well, it's almost impossible to see with the camera, but I'll circle it. And it also has a crack right here. That's pretty common. Um, they'll sometimes get a crack over on this side here, and they'll often crack up in between in between here uh, this manifold came out of storage though so it's been sitting for a long time it doesn't have a ton of miles on it you can see by the cobweb in it but uh, actually you can see the crack better from the inside the crack is right there and there's another one right here um, they pretty much all have that um, so the reason I decided to even do this video is I posted up on our Instagram a picture of, um, of this manifold and I had a customer buy this manifold off eBay. He paid $300 for this thing. And you know, the, the item description on eBay was that it's a brand new 90 plus manifold. Well, even at my first glance, I said, oh yeah, great. Okay. It looked fine to me, but you know, the only concerning thing that I got at first was that he said he's only had this thing for 5,000 miles. Now this particular customer, um, you know, <laughs> I know that he drives this stuff quite hard. Um, you know, he's not a racer or anything, but you know, we do turbo upgrades on his cars just so he can, uh, not overheat his car on his, uh, normal freeway driving. So, you know, the thing certainly gets a workout, but so yeah, I, I told him no problem. I can weld it up. I, I do this all the time. It's a service I offer. He's great. Sent me the manifold. I started doing the process that we'll do later in this video, but um, I got to work on it and the thing absolutely does not weld. Um, you know, I, I weld cast iron all the time. I, I don't have a problem with it. It's something I'm used to. Um, it's very easy to do. I've been doing this for years. So went through the process, go to weld this thing and it just burns holes right through it. The You heat it up and the, the cast iron just evaporates. I, I was baffled. I tried different rods. I tried a few different things. And then um, I sat down and I really looked at these manifolds and they're completely different parts. Uh, I'm a little bit of a casting nerd. So I, I, when you start looking at castings, you can see, you know, how they were made. And all these Volvo manifolds are basically have the same core set up. And you can see these core lines here. And this is where their mold had, had a core block that they put in here to to make this these parts that wouldn't draft in the mold and uh, if you look at at this manifold it doesn't have any of that so you know it's either a different process or their core lines are just in a different spot um, I don't see anything um, you know I don't know maybe they're just copying a manifold some kind of an investment casting or something but um, if you look closely, the way that the logo and the part number is cast in, the font's slightly different. Um, it, you know, this is usually a casting plate where on this original Volvo manifold, you can see where the casting plate is indented into the mold. Uh, that's not the case here. Um, you know, there's a part number. Maybe that's, you know, this may be the... Um, 
the material on the exhaust manifold that's cast into it. This has nothing. So, you know, when you really start looking at the details, it's quite a bit different, and it's certainly not the same material. So I, I got a lot of crap on Instagram, a lot of people telling me that I'm welding it wrong or giving advice for what I should be doing, and, um, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm guilty of given that same advice to other people, but believe me when I tell you that these, these quote new manifolds on eBay are, are not the same thing as a Volvo one. So, um, from now on, you know, I'm going to tell people to watch this video to make sure that, uh, when they're sending their manifold in that I'm getting a genuine Volvo one and not one of these things. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I don't want my time wasted with, um, this stuff showing up and I can't do anything with it. Uh, it's hard to tell people that their manifolds just going in the recycle bin and, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Luckily, um, I had this manifold. I was going to use it to plus T a shop car, but, um, we'll, we'll just do something different with that. Um, and I'll get this customer back on the road. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how I, uh, fix these manifolds up and, um, you know, if it's something you want to do on your own, great. Um, if not, and you want to send it in, we're happy to do it. So the first step, we're going to go ahead and locate the cracks that are in it, and we're going to grind them out. Um, I have a, a die grinder with a carbide bit. Um, this shape of bit works really well for this. Um, sometimes I'll you know, if I need to get in there quick, I'll use a, a cutoff wheel to, to get down deep in there. But what I want to do is grind a, a groove in there so I got something for the weld to fill in. And, um, you know, a nice clean area to work with. So um, I'll show you that. Ear and eye protection for this part, for sure. All right, so I blasted this thing and, uh, you know, once I cleaned it up, I was able to, you can see the cracks much more clear now. Um, but I also came across this crack right here. So we got a little more grinding we can do. So now we have all the cracks that I can find that are all um, ground and drilled and now we're ready for the next step. Uh, before I started on this I preheated my oven. We just have an oven that we use in the shop here. I got some other projects, uh, some screwed up powder coating in there right now. We have an oven in the shop that we use for everything from powder coating to getting stuff ready for press fit or uh, welding cast iron. So um, I preheated the oven to uh, 600 degrees and we're just going to go ahead and put that in there uh, and you know I'll check the temperature um, in a little bit and make sure that the manifold is uh, up to 600 degrees before we try to start welding on it. All right so we're gonna uh, check and make sure that we're up to temperature on our on our manifold so um, that looks like it'll do it. We'll get the welder ready and get ready to weld that. The next step in the process is we're going to TIG weld this with NI99 rod. Uh, this stuff is the secret to keeping it uh, from cracking after the weld cools. You know, so far we've ground out the, the cracks, we've drilled the cracks, we've preheated it. And now we're going to TIG weld it. And after we're done welding it, um, you know, there's not a lot of cracks, so we should be able to do it in one shot. If it cools off too much, we're going to have to reheat it so that it welds good again. After we're done welding it, we're going to put it back in the oven, and um, I'm going to go home from the night. I'll, I'll shut the oven off and let it gradually cool down overnight, and my customer will be here in the morning to pick it up. So 
Um, that should be all that there is to it. There's our manifold with the cracks welded up. Uh, I'm gonna hurry and get this thing in the oven uh, so that it doesn't cool off too much and crack, but uh, seems like it turned out pretty well. All right, so back in the oven. I'm gonna let it heat up a little bit and then I'm gonna shut it down for the night. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Uh, I left here last night, maybe nine o'clock and it's eight o'clock in the morning now. Uh, this thing's been sitting in the oven with the oven off, um, all night. So let's see if we're still in good shape on this. So the welding all looks good. No cracks. I think we're good to go. So that's all there is to it. This thing's ready for the customer to pick up. Uh, I'm just going to do a little cleanup in here, but nothing that I this is something you can totally do if you have a TIG welder and the rod and you know a way to heat the manifold up. Uh, there's other methods that people use, but I've done them all. I've done MIG welders and stick welders and all this, but this is by far the most uh, consistent. Um, I've had the best results with this setup. If there's a good welding shop near you, you can go ahead and have them do it. If not, um, check out the link in the description. Um, you know we offer the service you send us in the manifold and we'll send it back to you thanks for watching please like and subscribe to keep us going on our videos and stay tuned for the next one thanks